So let's spend a little bit of time talking about hacked uh, macos, right? So binary files for Mac OS. We're gonna look at two different malware samples here. Uh, we're gonna see one example that's really easy to identify that there's like an embedded Mako that's dropped. And then another one that actually leverages uh, a little bit of more classic packing like behavior. So this is super common when it comes to like Windows binaries, but not so much with uh, Mac OS binaries. So I've been spending a lot of time <laughs> looking at Windows recently. So I thought it would be cool to um, spend a little bit of time talking about this example on Mac OS. So first off, we're gonna start with this Rust sample. Um, so just to kind of provide some context, this, I wrote about this a bit ago, but essentially this was like a multi-stage thing that I had a lot of fun looking at. And um, one of the things that it had was inside of stage one, stage two, where uh, there was an embedded Mako and then it extracted it and then executed that file that kind of continued, um, you know, the execution of this until the last stage. So just to look at this really quickly, so this is Rust, though, of course, it can be a little bit difficult to understand if you haven't looked at this a lot. Uh, inside of the main function, this just is going to wrap main. And in this case, we have this pop main and then those um, unique uh, characters for this function. So we're just going to go in here. And we have a call to this temp file, file name temp file. It's going to create a name uh, temp file. And we see a call to this write all function. Uh, so temp file was passed into this result. Result two is in passed into result. And then we have this call, which is going to write to this temp file that was created. So we can see the size here, or what looks like a size argument that's passed to this write all function. This will be the destination of this. So like uh, dest. And then we have a reference to this in the binary. So if we go here, if you're familiar with um, header fi headers for Mako's, you'll see this looks like a Mako file. And we can see references here to different sections of the binary. So all this does is extract this out and it writes it to this temp file and then that ends up being executed further down. We have a permission set and then there's gonna be a process. Uh, yeah, so setting up the command for standard error, standard out, a new command and then it's gonna spawn that binary so this is a lot more simple to see because if you're just curious and you want to see what this is it's pretty quick to identify that this is a mako that's inside of this file so this then drops this mako and executes it so not nowhere near as complicated as like packed or dropper like behavior on windows but still interesting and an interesting example so now let's kind of shift and look at Another one, I think this is from last year. Let me make sure. So we go in here and we go to the start um, main. I looked this up and in virus total, we'll see. I mean, this is super well known. So not like we're dealing with something that's not known already. And this was submitted a while ago, but a good use case. So if we look into the community section, which is super helpful sometimes, new pack malware, which is interesting because I don't really ever see like pack stuff for Mako's. So let's dive in and see what they're talking about. So going back, we're inside the main function. Um, we're going to skip a lot because we're not too worried about a lot of these 
things at the start of this function. What we're mostly worried about is where this packing like behavior starts. Uh, so we have this NS get executable path function that's called. This is going to return the path to the executable that's running. So this is going to be a path to here. And then this is going to be used later on. So that's why I changed that variable name. So looking down from here, we'll see this for loop which is pretty interesting. And if you look at malware a lot, uh, it's pretty clear what's happening here. I mean, this gives it away. So this is XORing between this symbol and this. So we have bytes and potentially the key here. And it's using modulo to stay within certain bounds. And it's gonna do this uh, inside of a for loop until i is 0x27. So how long is that? 0x27. Okay, so 39 times. So this is going to do something with some bytes somewhere. So if we were to go to look at these bytes, it's stuff that we can't really read. Okay, so this is looking more interesting. And it only does this for 39 bytes. So that's potentially interesting too, because that means that there may be a, another for loop to go through this for the remaining bytes. Going back, we can see this inside here. It's sometimes a little easier to see if we were to look for this and then go into graph. Yeah, so that's, let's focus on that here. So with Intel syntax, I'm not <laughs> the best at it. Uh, ARM is definitely a, a lot more, uh, some, something I spent a lot more time with. So we're loading in a pointer to this key. So that's very helpful already. I mean, it already gives you a symbol name for key. That should be a dead giveaway there. Uh, we're then, so that gets into REX and then we're loading bytes or a pointer to these bytes into RCX. We saw what those bytes were. So um, then this is set as I. So Binary Ninja was able to see that this is used uh, as I. And we're just getting this pointer into RDX or whatever this value was inside of the stack into RDX. Um, we're moving a byte from RCX using this as our index. So this is starting at zero, if we go back to this for loop, we'll see I set to zero here. So I was initialized above this. So we're getting the first byte from bytes. We're moving into ESI or yeah, ESI. I get so confused with these registers. And then that gets, that I gets loaded into EDI. And then we have the key which is an RAX, which was loaded up here. This pointer is put onto this address. RDI, which is I is moved into EAX. We are XORing this. So zero is gonna be EDX. And then that's moved into EAX. This is moved into ECX. Okay, cool. So this then gets this same key into R8. And then this is going to get that byte from this key. And then those two bytes are then XORed. So this will then be our index. Move that here. And this is where the XORing happens between the byte that was pulled from, he from the bytes of the binary and then the uh, key. So then that will then get saved. We move that over and then what we care about is how the index iterates. So we get that I, we move it into e EAX and then we add one here and then it jumps. So if we look around, where is this jump? Okay, so we jump 
back here, which does a check. And it checks, first it loads that value of i into ax, and then it compares that to this value. So i, the first iteration will be zero. So what is this? This must have been set before. Yeah, so this is set up here. So this is how it iterates between this, goes over and over and over again, until it's these two match. And then if it's greater than, it continues, right? Okay, so that's the first for loop here. That sets something up. We're not really sure what we can do is write this up really quickly here. Um, I wrote this up for the sake of time. So pretty simple. We get those encoded bytes using the bv.read function in binary ninja. We pass in the address of that byte symbol for the length of 0x27, since that's what we're going to iterate through. We have our key. Um, this is a byte array, and then we just do a for loop similar to what we saw inside of the um, for loop in here. So we just, uh, for the length of the encoded bytes, which is going to be that 0x27, we do an XOR, ensuring that it stays within bounds of um, this value, which ends up being 0x24, which is 36 in decimal, and then it just prints it out. So just to make sure this actually runs right. So this prints out a chmod plus x, and then it has some format strings um, here, and then it does move. So then it moves things and it, set, it sets this character uh, to change the file name. So sets a file as executable and move, renames a file. Okay, so that's the first part of this. And let's just save that and close this. Uh, so what about the packing stuff? So this did a command and then this ends up being executed later on. We can see a system call down here. The cool thing is, is now we have this F open call, which is for this path, an X executable path uh, to write bytes into this stream. And now we have another for loop. Now this one's uh, for much more bytes. And we can tell that because we have this value. This is a huge number, actually. Yeah, what is that? 949, oh no, like nine, I don't know, a lot of bytes. So we're not worried about the size of that. It's a lot of bytes. And that's set up here. Just name it that for fun. And then we're just using malloc to alloc or create that space that we need. And then that's set up here. So uh, malloc things. And then it does a for loop similar to what we saw before. And let's see um, where it starts. So we have these bytes and then plus this value, which is 0x27. So it's starting from which what we would expect if it's going to continue going through those bytes. It's starting plus 0x27, and it's using that same key and using the same bytes. So pretty easy to see as well. If we go in here, oh, we go into the bytes. Yeah, so um, it goes through all of these starting at plus or the offset of 0x27, and then it does the XOR between that and the, and the key, and then it will end up writing these bytes into that stream. And at some point it will end up using it. So, oh, inside another system call down here. So let's take a look at that really quickly. Uh, we are inside of this for loop. So let's just see where this malloc happens. Yeah, so similar stuff that we saw before. The only thing that changes is that the index, you add the plus 0x27 
So what we're going to do is just quick snippet, which I got together for sake of time here. So our encoded changes a little bit. Now I could have modified the other one uh, to do this, but instead I just wrote these bytes out. So pv.read, same address plus that offset for this amount of bytes. So this is going to be much big, greater length. Get that same key and then the same thing. Same uh, for loop. And then we just write this out to this decoded output that I put into the temp directory. So save, run, and then we can go and look at that here. Now, if you looked at um, other Mako's in the past, it's easy to see. that this is another Mako file also works. I'm going to have to write all that. Yeah. Cool. So this extracted out this packed <laughs> Mako that was within here. So now we can open that up. So let me just do like a application and uh, content. Ninja and then decoded output. Oop. Hold on. Let me just open this up here. Decoded output. Um, so I need to move it. So let me just copy decoded output and then just put it into my malware directory. Cool. All right. A lot of malware. Decoded output. Cool. So this is the Mako that we extracted out. We technically unpacked, and this looks like a Pi installer install Python, which is interesting. And I guess this is used for something else. I haven't looked deep into this one, but just a quick example of what a packed Mako could potentially look like uh, since it's not incredibly common. Again, it was just a simple XOR that it uses um, and it was nice enough, nice enough to label the bytes and the key for us. And then we can just use binary ninja to extract it out and then continue our analysis. All right. Well, that's it.